Hi, my name is Isabel. Welcome to my channel. Today, you and I, we're going to be making this top together. For today's project, we'll be using one of my favorite fuss-free fabrics, namely a cotton jersey with 5% of elastan. This is a really common blend to find out there in many countries, in many shops, which is why I chose it. You're going to need a bit of light woven interfacing, and that's pretty much it. I've printed my pattern on all pages, a pair, a letter and a number. The letters indicate the order for the lines. And so the first line is all A's, the second B's, and there could have been C's and D's and so on. And the columns are all numbers. So the first column is all ones, then we have twos, three, and so on. And all my patterns follow this logic. So I'm going to cut off some margins, then I'll stick the pages in order. And finally, I'll cut out the pattern pieces. Plus, there are the strap pieces to cut as well. You'll find the dimensions, of course, in the pattern. Here we are, my straps are cut twice. Here are the backs and the fronts. I've stuck into facing on all the corners of the top uh, where my straps will be sewed. And actually later on, I figured that it's even better to stick a long strip of interfacing covering the entire width of the neck. So I recommend you do that instead. And I have stuck interfacing on my strap pieces as well. All right, I'll associate each back with the front and I'll sew them together, right sides touching on the sides. Here are some tiny precisions that will make things easier and neater later. So you're going to start your seam here at armpit level with straight stitches on about three centimeters. Then you will switch to a zigzag stitch until the bottom. And it should look like this. I'm being a bit fussy with details, but it is a very simple top, so why not take care of them since we have time? Okay, we've got our two bodices here. You want to take one of the two bodices and turn it inside out so the right side of the fabric is facing up. You'll insert it inside the other bodice. That way, the right sides of the two bodices are touching. And of course, don't mix up the front and the back. You want to have the fronts touching and the back's touching. If you observe the pattern, you'll see that the front is one centimeter lower than the back. Okay, let's stop for a second. It is feeding time. I know the project is far from being over, but I really want you to have the reflex to take some breaks during the sewing process to try on the garments. So even if it is a bit awkward without straps, try the bodice on with the two layers of fabric and move around, get a feel of how tight it is. And if necessary, make things narrower or tap into the seam allowances to get more space. I'm going to pin the two bodices around the armhole. You want to flatten the seam allowances in opposite directions. I personally like to add lots of pins. So here they are. I start with straight stitches on about 3 cm, then I switch to zigzag stitches, and then when I reach the opposite neckline, back to straight stitches about 3 cm before the end. This is what I get. Now I take the little rectangles of fabric and I fold them right sides together. I pin. And I sew using a zigzag stitch. I take my loop turner and I turn the straps inside out and I press them down. I'll now add the straps. So as you can see, I have the front before me as it's shorter than the back. I'm going to insert my straps in the corners of the neckline. I'm going to try and push them against the seam on the side as much as I can. Really tuck them there and I pin. Same on the other side. For the seam, um, I'm afraid of the fabric stretching out, which is common when sewing jersey with a regular sewing machine instead of an overlocker. So I first made a basting seam with straight stitches, and then I sewed another seam on top, straight stitches on 3 cm at first, and then zigzags and back to straights to prevent the fabric from stretching out. And by the way, even with this precaution, I still find that the neckline is stretching out. Hence my advice of actually sticking into facing tape on the entire neckline 
not just the corners. So I removed the basting stitches and now I have to sew the neckline of the back. So at this point, the straps are only sewed to one face of the bodice, it's the front, while we want the straps sewed to both the front and the back of the top logic. So I'll insert my hand and reach for the strap. Here it is. I seize it and I don't let go. Now I'll open the two layers of the back of the bodice and I will bring and place the free end of the strap between the two layers against the seam and I pin. Then I reach for the other one and same process. I pin the straps and the entire neckline and I sew. There we go. You can quickly check if the straps are neatly sewed on the right side of the fabric. And if all is well, you can trim the seam allowances at the corners. I'm also going to make notches around the armholes where it's very curvy. I turn inside out and here is how it looks. Time for the famous burrito method. I'm going to pin the seam allowance flat so they're not twisted. Okay, I lay my top flat, so here is the middle of the top. Okay, if I insert my hand, it goes out. Okay, now I take this one layer of the front, I'll bring it all around so that it ends up being right sides together against the other layer of the front. So basically, you're only considering the front layers connecting the shell to its lining right sides together. You don't pay attention to the back. I'm going to pin the layers matching the center notch, then the sides, and basically all around. And you're going to pull to free the fabric that hasn't been pinned. You have to be delicate because it can be that the pins want to take off and if at some point you don't know what you're pinning anymore, like is that the front, the back, the lining, the shell, that means you're on the right track. Once you've pinned all edges together, you're also using the zigzag. And very important, you'll leave a five centimeter or about two inch long opening. Here's another angle I tried, but yeah, it's blurry. This is my opening, I'll trim my seam allowances. And now, big moment, I'll pull the entire top out of this little opening delicately.
How satisfying is it? And the last step, my friends, is about closing the opening by hand as neatly as possible. And that's it. Some close-ups of the project. Just drops. Side. If you liked this top, you might like the long dress that I made using the pattern and combining it with a skirt pattern that I also have on my shop. Go check out the tutorial, it's also on my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to be in the know of what I do, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest. I'll see you soon for another video and meanwhile, you take care.